Hi guys, it is a, another beautiful day here in paradise in the end times. We have made it somehow as a planet till Monday, January 25th, 2016. I've been up at the lighthouse camping and been away from the mainstream media for a while. So here I am back on it again on this Monday bringing you my economic meltdown roundup rant to the background noise apparently of these goddamn are these these little four-wheel drive I don't know what kind of plant eater this is perfect background noise for my weekly economic meltdown roundup rant where I just go on the pages of the mainstream media just for a few examples of how the global industrial economy is bringing down this planet and of course anybody looking at the global industrial economy bringing down a planet this week would think that Flint, Michigan is the single biggest story about the global industrial economy bringing down a planet well it actually does not even rate anywhere on the radar but of course according to the mainstream media and this is the biggest. Yes, there's a little Sancho Panza coming to dig a hole while I'm yakking. So anyway, but I will say Flint, Michigan. What's going on in Flint, Michigan is an absolutely perfect microcosmic example of what is going on and what is ramping up across the entire planet. So there's no better place to start a ramp around a romp around a collapsing planet in Flint, Michigan good God how many stories here's they killing us off they killing us off this is what the people of Flint have to say to the world let's hear what the people of Flint have to say to the world Yes, how about, uh, I can't even pronounce some of these names. Here is Quazindria McGee. Quazindria. Quote, the water is horrible here. They killing us off. Here is Carla Muhammad. This is beyond a disaster. It is criminal. That's exactly what it is. Here is Kenneth McLeod, quote, kids here, meaning Flint, kids would play in the hydrants. They would drink the water. They did not know their lives were at risk. There you go. Here uh, is Deborah Lewis. Uh, this might be my might be my f favorite uh, my favorite quote from Flint, Michigan, this week. We have to take money out of our food stamps to buy water. We have to take money out of our food stamps to buy water. That is uh, my quote of the week so far. Here is. Artina Bugs, they knew. They let us continue drinking it, and now people are dying. There you go. Here is Joe Love suggesting Michael Moore should keep his opinions to himself. Hmm. There you go. So that's what the people of Flint, Michigan, want to tell the world. I'm just spreading the word. So let's go from Flint, Michigan over there to the second biggest story. If you're trying to find examples of the, the uh, global industrial economy taking down a planet, according to the mainstream media, the second biggest story on the planet, probably really in the position on the planet would be about, good God, number 500. Number two, let's go over there and look at that giant gas leak in California. What is the latest news from that thing? Regulators order closure of site 
of massive California gas leak. Three months after the Southern California Gas Company reported a leak north of Los Angeles that has emitted thousands of tons of methane, sickening residents and forcing them to relocate, state regulators have ordered the closure of the well once the rupture is contained. So, which is, you know, the big question is, is first plugging the rupture. And then, uh, so first they got to plug it, and then they got to shut down the well. So if you stop reading the story there, if you read just the headline or even that much of the story, you might have some crazy idea that they are shutting down Aliso Canyon. And you would be completely wrong. They have been ordered to shut one well down. Unfortunately, there is this other problem, the other 114 wells, the other 114 wells on the same site. And there you go. We're going to be chugging away as always. Mm -hmm. Since the leak was discovered in October, it has emitted into the atmosphere more than 89,000 metric tons of the potent greenhouse gas methane. That is the equivalent of burning 843 million gallons of gasoline. This is one gas leak in one gas well out of a gas field of 115 wells 20 miles from downtown Los Angeles spewing out enough uh, CO2 that you can find in 843 million gallons of gasoline. And there you go. Okay, let's go from LA to your tent, and probably to my tent, where you see this latest report from Greenpeace, toxic chemicals found in most outdoor gear. Greenpeace said Monday that hazardous chemicals were widely present in a range of outdoor gear it tested from clothing and footwear to backpacks, tents, and sleeping bags. The environmental activist group tested 40 of these various outdoor products, 40, and 36 of them, otherwise known as 90%, contained this class of chemicals called PFCs. The study shows that toxic chemicals are still widely present in products by brands such as Jack of Wolfskin, the North Face, Patagonia, Mammut, Narona, and Saliwa, especially the production of footwear, pants, sleeping bags, and some jackets. PFCs are used to add waterproof and dirt repellent finishes to outdoor apparel that are hazardous to the environment and humans. There you go. And they are now dispersed over the entire globe. The entire globe. Let's see, as long as we're talking about the entire globe, let's go over there to the oceans, particularly uh, the Pacific Ocean, I guess. This is on the heels of my doomsday sermon yesterday about plastic pollution. You know, that, that report coming out last week about by the year 2050, within the next 35 years, that there is going to be more plastic in this world's oceans than fish in the next 35 years. And this story uh, from Global P 
post looking, digging into these statistics, finding that five countries, five countries spew more plastic into the oceans than the rest of the world put together. There you go. The planet's seas are choking on our junk. Yes, and it turns out that five countries are the leading contributors to this crisis, and all of them are in Asia. In a recent report, Ocean Conservancy claims that China, China, Indonesia, the Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam are spewing out as much as 60% of the plastic waste that enters the world's oceans. And so by 2025, the next nine years, we're looking at one ton of plastic for every three tons of fish. 25 years after that, plastic's going to pass. Um, Westerners, namely Americans, are seen as the world's most incorrigible consumers of stuff. Soda, gadgets, sneakers, and other items that produce plenty of trash. So, how did a few Asian countries, many of them comparatively poor, end up churning out much of the plastic waste that swirls through the seas? The number one reason the number one reason Asia is adopting Western style appetites for consumer junk. Anybody who does not understand uh, where overpopulation meets overconsumption, where the two heads of the snake m meeting to take down a planet you go over there to Asia, okay? One head of the snake in the U.S. overconsumption, the other head of the snake, Sub-Saharan Africa overpopulation. If you want both heads of the planet-eating snake, you go to Asia, which is adopting Western-style appetites for consumer junk. As Asian economies rise, people have more cash to blow on Marlboros and Sprites at 7-Eleven. But the junk these habits produce often does not end up in legitimate landfills. Uh, I love the, this next reason. Trash scavengers cannot keep up. There is so much of this shit. Uh, being pumped out. The trash scavengers cannot pick up, cannot keep up with the supply, and don't forget corporations crank out tiny portion sizes for the poor. So uh, they, they're selling all of these things in these little plastic packages uh, and Asia corporations sell everything from beauty products to instant noodles in tiny cheap quantities. Okay, the next reason. Asia's garbage men often cut corners. Uh, in the Philippines, for instance, an island nation where sanitation trucks often flout the law, research suggests that up to 90 percent of the plastic dumped illegally ends up in the ocean uh, and a lot of times uh, it says that uh, they actually put the landfills right next to the ocean hoping that the seasonal floods will actually wash the shit out into the ocean thereby opening up more space in the overfilled landfills for more garbage trucks, that they are depending on the monsoons 
to wash this shit out into the ocean. There you go. And all that garbage is having devastating effects on the seas, choking marine life to death, dramatically warping ecosystems, and wreaking environmental havoc that some experts liken to the climate change crisis. Anybody who wants to see a picture of what plastic pollution looks like in Jakarta, Indonesia. Jakarta, Indonesia. Looks a whole lot like Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, where they're going to have the Olympics. There you go. This is a person, uh, a garbage scavenger in a canoe in a canoe scavenging garbage with a big net that's Indonesia uh, this is another picture from Jakarta Indonesia there you go let's see I, uh, there is a picture of the kid how about this how about throwaway society? Is this a picture of a child who should ever have been born? There you go. This kid looks to be about 10 years old out scavenging garbage. Talk about throwaway children. There you go. Anyway, as long as we're over there in Indonesia let's look at this next story from Indonesia Indonesian birds on the brink as forest plundered there you go as forest plundered and I guess who's taking it in the short and curly feathers uh, they take a long time to get into it. Uh, anyway, the scale of uh, of this crisis is massive. It involves millions and millions of birds every year. It's just really reaching a point now, a critical point, where it is now or never for a lot of these species. There you go. And let's go from Indonesia to, I don't know, let's go over there to Bolivia. We have two lake stories to wrap up this rant. This is a lake in Bolivia. Disappearance of Bolivia's number two lake, a harbinger. Um, here's a description. You can't really see this photo. Overturned fishing skiffs lie abandoned on the shores of what was Bolivia's second largest lake. Beetles dying on bird carcasses in gulls fight for scraps under a glaring sun. This is Lake Pupo. Lake Pupo was officially declared evaporated last month and hundreds if not thousands of people have lost their livelihoods and gone. Now, of course, a whole lot of this being attributed to uh, climate change. Uh, El Nino, in particular, climate change more generally. Um, but that's not, uh, not all uh, that, it, that it's talking about. They're talking about Mining companies, mining companies have been diverting water going into the lake since 1982. 
Environmentalists and local activists say the government mismanaged fragile water resources and ignored rampant pollution from, from mining, which is, of course, Bolivia's second biggest export earner after natural gas. More than 100 mines are, upst are upstream, and Bolivia's biggest state-owned tin mine was among those dumping its untreated tailings into Pupo's tributaries. The president of Bolivia's National Chamber of Mining said any blame by the industry is, quote, insignificant compared to climate change. Uh, well, I don't know if that's bullshit. Uh, compared to climate change, you know, guys. But anyway, we're going to uh, wrap up this uh, romp around a collapsing planet with a story that I did have ready for my Saturday clueless moron roundup rant, but it works just as well here. As we see this headline, 92,000, 92,000 people petition Canada not to store nuclear waste near the Great Lakes. 92,000 people have pressed Ottawa to reject a proposal to store nuclear waste in an underground vault near the Great Lakes, fearing a spill would contaminate this source of drinking water for 40 million people in Canada and the United States. This is going on while this Flint River thing is going on, this little story appearing one time. Uh, I guess they're going to rule on this in March. Uh, Ontario Power Generation insists that the rock at this location is impermeable and has been stable for 450 million years and thus is ideal for storing radi radioactive waste, which can take millions of years to decay. Spokesman, OPG spokesman Ned Kelly said, quote, public health and safety will be protected. Oh, come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. But critics reject industry assurances and say any risk of contamination of the largest group of freshwater lakes created by glaciers 14,000 years ago and containing more than 20% of the world's surface freshwater is too great. Quote, this is Beverly Fernandez, one of these lake huggers. Quote, no scientist nor geologist can provide us with a 100,000-year guarantee that this nuclear waste dump will not leak and contaminate the Great Lakes. So, when we found out that this uh, nuclear power plant was trying to locate this nuclear waste right beside the Great Lakes, the drinking water for 40 million people in two countries, we felt compelled to do something. To do something. And so she started a petition, and uh, anybody who thinks their little petition with 92,000 people saying, please do not put a nuclear waste dump right next to the Great Lakes is going to convince uh, this nuclear waste dump, I don't know, to get blasted off to planet Nibiru. Got one thing to tell you. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Yep. And with that, we're going to wrap up uh, this uh, 
this economic meltdown roundup rat right here and I'm heading off into the sunset let's just go look at this I get this these pictures from Flint Michigan this is a picture uh Here's a picture I wanted to wrap up this rant with. A picture of the end times. There you go. <laughs> we have to take money out of our food stamps to buy water. Uh, anybody wondering, wondering what the collapse of global industrial civilization looks like in Flint, Michigan, and anywhere else on the planet, I think that picture from Flint, Michigan is pretty much uh, as much of a photograph to demonstrate the collapse of global industrial civilization as this uh, Indonesian boy uh, pulling garbage out of uh, out of whatever hell hole he's pulling garbage out of and I with that I am off to have a rum and pineapple juice and watch the sunset in paradise bye guys